I'm so glad you're joining me as we continue this practical series about God's answers for your marriage. On Monday, I pointed out how when God is a part of our covenant relationship of marriage, then the words of Solomon in Ecclesiastes come alive when he said a threefold cord is not easily broken. Think of it this way for a moment. En envision a triangle with God. God's at the top. The husband and the wife are the two corners at the bottom, opposite ends of the triangle. But as a husband and wife draw closer to God, they draw closer to themselves. And according to relationship expert Dr. Gary Smalley, the four greatest needs of a woman are these. Number one, men listen up, emotional and physical security. Number two, the need for regular, meaningful communication. Number three, non-sexual touch. And number four, romance. Every day when we as husbands come home from work, our wives may be without even knowing it, hoping that these needs are going to be met by us. A woman wants to feel the security of her husband's love, feel the security of his commitment to her. She wants the ability to express her feelings and opinions without being interrupted or criticized. She wants to be held and caressed without it being linked to us as husbands and our need for sex. She wants to be listened to. She wants to have the opportunity to talk about her day, her hopes, desires, dreams. Our wives want to hear about our day. They want to feel connected. They want to be romanced. They want to feel valued for who they are and what they do. You know, men, our wives have a need to be cherished. Their hearts are tender. A wife needs to be loved with a unique combination of gentleness and strength by us as their husbands in order for them to thrive and grow in our marriage relationship. In Ephesians chapter 5, we read how a husband can truly love his wife by following the example that Jesus set himself. He said, here are five keys from the book of Ephesians. Number one, a loving husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. You know, how is Christ the head of the church? He leads us by serving us. He accepts responsibility for our physical, emotional, spiritual well-being. He leads us from a combined position of strength and humility. And when a husband endeavors to follow Jesus' example in his marriage, he leads his wife by being responsible, humble, strong, regarding the needs of her spirit, soul, and body. Number two, a loving husband loves his wife just as Christ loved the church. So how did Christ love the church? He loves the church passionately with unconditional love, not because the church is perfect, but simply because of his grace, his mercy, his tenderness towards us. A husband can't wait for his wife to be perfect, not before he loves her. He chooses to love her unconditionally and tenderly, just as she is. Number three, a loving husband gives himself to his wife, just as Christ gave himself to the church. So how did Christ give himself to the church? He, he gives to us continually, without thought of himself. He laid his life down for us as his bride, and he did that so we could achieve our destiny and be all that he's called us to be. In the same way, a husband loves his wife unceasingly and lays his life down for her. His goal is to do whatever he can do to help his wife walk in the fullness of her own high calling in Jesus Christ. Number four, a loving husband purifies his wife just as Christ cleanses the church. So how did Christ cleanse the church? With the washing of water by the word that she, the church, might be holy and blameless. Jesus' ultimate goal is to present us without spot or wrinkle to his Father at the marriage supper of the Lamb as his bride. And until that glorious day, he continually washes us clean by his blood and the cleansing power of his word. You know, we as husbands, we have a key role to play in the sanctification of our wives as the head of the home. We can protect our family from the darkness that the enemy wants to bring into our homes. We lay a foundation for our wives' spiritual purity by pursuing our own intimate relationship with Jesus through worship, through the Word, through prayer. And number five, a loving husband's relationship with his wife is his first priority, just as we are Christ's first priority. 
Christ set aside all his earthly relationships with his mother, his brothers, his disciples, and friends in order to what? To woo us as his bride and win us through his sacrificial love. Even so, as husbands, our most important earthly relationship is to be with our wives, before parents, before children, before friends, before fellow church members or co-workers, anyone. Our wives are supposed to be our first priority. Our relationship with our wives is second only to our relationship with the Lord. If you're a husband watching this today, you may be thinking it's impossible for you to love your wife as Jesus loves his bride, the church because of your own issues. Maybe you're even thinking, David, if you only knew my wife, you'd know why this is impossible. Well, my friend, if your marriage needs restoration, if you and your wife need a miracle in your relationship, if you want with all your heart to have a passionate, joyful, peace-filled relationship with her, then I assure you today it is possible because with God, all things are possible even the miraculous restoration of your marriage. We're going to continue this series of teachings tomorrow with a word of encouragement for wives. And until then, God bless you.